Bonjour et bienvenue. Hello and welcome to another episode of Inspire Africa. I'm Barbara Lundu. Here are the top stories. We'll start with Cameroon. Former tennis player Joseph Oyebong has opened an academy to pass on his passion to the younger generation. But he does more than teach tennis. Through sport, he also wants to help the underprivileged youth. In Kenya, two women have created an association to restore old libraries and digitalize their content, an alliance between history and technology to allow Kenyans, wherever they may be, to have access to a part of their country's history with just a click. Finally, we will introduce you to Teddy Kosoko, a Central African who has created a video game studio unlike any other. He wants to promote African history and culture. His games are inspired by famous footballers and other historical heroes from Africa. Teamwork, determination and perseverance. Skills that are conveyed through sports, for example. We take you to Cameroon, where former tennis champion Joseph Oyebog has opened an academy to pass on his passion and help the underprivileged youth. Former tennis player Joseph Oyebog's academy started out of a desire to share his passion for the sport with the young. Lacking proper facilities, the former player decided to turn his back garden in a popular neighborhood of Douala in Cameroon into a mini tennis court. And that's when the future stars started to arrive. It was the children themselves who came and asked me if we could have a center in Bonaberry. And as I didn't have the space, I decided to convert the back garden into a mini tennis court. That was the starting point. And gradually, we went from a center that couldn't win a match to a center that is now the best center in the country. All the best players of the Cameroonian junior team come from this center. And among the promising Cameroonian tennis players is Chanel. The young girl lives here at the academy, located in Sousa, in the west of the country. And like many of her age, she has great ambitions. I've been playing tennis for eight years, and I joined the academy in 2019. And I would like to be like my idol, Serena Williams. Joseph Oybog's work is paying off. The Academy recently hosted an international junior championship. I was pleasantly surprised that the people of the Academy participate in training with the players here in practice because they want to exchange. It's very nice. They are well educated. For Joseph Oyborg, it's not only about tennis. He wants to open the doors to this sport because he feels it is essential to end inequalities. The lessons given at the academy are free of charge. and also aim to enable young people to find opportunities in the tennis industry. Let's now head to Kenya in Nairobi. Two women have embarked on an unprecedented adventure, restoring the oldest library in the capital and also to digitalize the books and documented contents in order to safeguard part of the country's written history. Located in the heart of Nairobi, this is the Macmillan Library, one of the oldest libraries in Kenya. Opened in 1931, it was only open to white people during the colonial era. Things have changed since and Kenyans often visit this historic place which contains rare books dating back to the beginning of the 20th century. And that's where Book Bunk comes in. Founded by two Kenyan women, a writer and a publisher, the association's goals include restoring the library and digitizing its books. I think one of the most important things is that it opens up um, archives and records um, for, for people's interrogation. Sometimes you hear about things that are um, presented as historical facts, for example, that you're not able to verify. So the first um, important thing for me is just kind of granting universal access to our history and our records so that it becomes something that is available to everyone. To carry out the huge task of digitizing the library's books and archives, Wanjiru and Angela called on volunteers who work tirelessly every day. So we simply take for example, a newspaper, um, 
like the county weekly, which is a lot of print newspaper. And then we take we take with a DSLR camera each and every page. And so we have our team of two digitized digitization interns who then flip through each and every page and capture the image one by one. The young women do not want to erase the colonial past reflected in the current collections. But in order for Kenyans to reclaim this place, the team has included books by contemporary African authors in the collection. Wanjiru and Angela have also helped transform the library into a space for events that celebrate writing, such as the Library Literature Festival. Before introducing our guests, please watch this video, it will give you an idea of his work. This is a video game created by Teddy Kosoko. This young Central African wants to make people discover African history and culture through these games. Hello Teddy, how did you come about this idea? I chose video games because I noticed that people play a lot. It's part of their everyday life. If they play on their phones or their consoles, like the PlayStation and beyond that, when they play, they enter other people's cultures. For example, there are a lot of South Korean games, games that are inspired by Nordic mythologies or American cultures that have had a strong impact on the planet. In Africa, for example, we all know Japanese manga. We grew up with it. So I said to myself, if others have managed to do that with their culture, we in Africa, with all the rich cultures we have, why shouldn't we do the same thing? That's how I got started. Do you think it's easier to discover African culture through video games? It's much easier for me because people will have visual support. For example, there is a scenario we wrote in which the character meets the Dogons of Mali, the Maasai in Kenya, the Pygmies in Central Africa. Seeing this universe, even for me, an African who grew up in Africa, was a shock to see the result. It comes to life. It is much easier to visualize because our objective is to base ourselves on history so that beyond entertainment, people can learn about the richness of the African culture. People often say wrongly that Africa has no history. This is false. People just don't know the history of the African continent. As a young girl or a man in Congo, Ghana or Senegal, how do you play these games? All our games are available on the Google Store and the Apple Store. We are also developing a platform for Africa that aims to facilitate purchases. On our platform, people will be able to pay by mobile money. For West African countries such as Senegal or Mali, they can even pay by cash. If someone has 100 CFA, we have set up a code system and they can go to partner shops to pay for the game. Last question, how do you see the future of video game market in Africa? The potential is there. The gamers and the players are there. There is a growing interest in African content. Recently in South Africa, there is a company that has managed to raise about $30 million for gaming in Africa. This is the first, and it shows the interest of some investment funds in the African continent. We also see that internet penetration is improving, with, for example, the arrival of Google Cable in Togo recently. Politicians in Senegal, Benin, etc. are beginning to understand the interest in video games, and especially their economic potential. We have more and more good developers capable of creating games. The public is now aware of the cultural and and educational potential of video games. I am therefore very optimistic about the future of the video game market in Africa. Teddy Kosoko, thank you for answering our questions. Thank you for giving me visibility. Thank you very much. 
L'émission est bientôt terminée. Mais Before we leave, you may know the ghetto kids, former street children of Uganda, who became famous on social networks thanks to their energetic choreographies. Thanks to their success, they can now afford to go to school. And after two years of closure due to COVID-19, schools have recently reopened in Uganda, and the ghetto kids have released a video to celebrate their return to school. We leave you with these images. See you soon.